Good afternoon to all of you. Um, my name is Kuna Bosra. I'm the IP coordinator, as most of you know. Um, I see that people are joining the session as we speak. This is the first of a series of um, events that we are organizing in the COVID context. So in the past, we had the computing systems weeks, but now this is impossible. We cannot organize a networking event. And that's why we decided to change it into computing systems webinars. Um, we will have two webinars per week, uh, one on Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock and another one on Thursday morning at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, you are welcome to uh, attend all of them. Uh, you can register at our website for the, uh, these webinars. And as soon as you're registered, you will receive the Zoom link uh, to attend. We will also make recordings of these webinars so that you can also uh, listen to them after the event if you are not uh, able to listen to the streaming version of it. Um, today, it's my great pleasure to introduce the first webinar, uh, which will be a webinar about the High Peak Vision 2001. And the presentation will be brought, uh, well, Marc Duraton will bring the presentation. Marc Duraton is one of the uh, longtime uh, High Peak partners, and he has been involved in the High Peak roadmap and vision documents since 2009. So he's really Mr. Um, roadmap, Mr. Vision, and he is one of the secret weapons that we have in the High Peak uh, network. Uh, Mark is senior researcher in the research and the technology department of CEA in France. So without further ado, Mark, I would like to give you the floor. Maybe I can also uh, tell the uh, attendees, if you have questions, feel free uh, to type them in, in the Q&A session. Uh, at the end of the session, we will um, give Mark an opportunity to answer them. And if you want to have a, a discussion with Mark at that time, you can also raise your hand and we will unmute you for the Q&A session. Mark, the floor is yours. So thank you, Kuhn. So uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and it's my great pleasure to start this uh, new uh, start of, uh, of the computing uh, um, a system week with the presentation of the IP Vision 2021. Uh, so Kuhn told you that uh, uh, I am in charge of this, uh, but I'm not alone. Uh, uh, so we have an editorial board. Uh, uh, composed of Kuhn, of uh, Bart, of uh, Christian, Thomas, uh, Harm, uh, Catherine, uh, Tulio, and Olivier. And, uh, and we all work uh, from your input, so from the input of the, of the community to make uh, uh, this IP vision 2021. So first, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, the vision? So the vision is a, a deliverable of the IP, uh, which is a European project. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's something that we have to do. And typically uh, what we want is to help the community to uh, see where the community, so the community of high performance on, on embedded architecture and compi on, on compilation is going uh, in terms of, uh, of innovation, in terms of societal impact, and also uh, one of the goal of the vision is also to give recommendation to the commission to which domain should be supported in the forthcoming years. So uh, we edited uh, the vision document every two years and uh, the last version was uh, 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 available uh, from, uh, from uh, January uh, of this year. So typically, uh, what is the structure of the document? And as you can see, it's a, it's a thick document of, uh, of nearly uh, uh, 225 pages. And, uh, uh, but don't worry, uh, it's quite easy to, uh, to read and to understand. So in this document, we have one part. So the first part are the recommendation. And we divided them into three subparts. One are the technical recommendation which are really linked to a particular uh, uh, a topic, to a particular problem to solve. The global policy recommendation that are more wide, that could cover several domains together. The societal recommendation that are really at the level of the, of the complete European society. And from this, uh, we have uh, what we use to, um, uh, to call uh, the rationale. So why we end up in this recommendation? In the past, this was uh, a quite a long chapter and we changed this year, but we still have 
the organization into four subsection, the European dimension, the societal dimension, the business dimension, and the technical dimension. But un unlike in the previous version, what we did this year is that each uh, domain or topic uh, is covered by what we call an article. So it's, uh, it's an easy to read uh, 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 article like in a magazine, which is about uh, between uh, 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 five to 10 pages and that you can read independently. So here we have one on the continuum on, of computing, uh, one on the uh, moonshot project that we propose, uh, one on the cyber physical system or on the extreme pre uh, prediction use case. So, and um, or of course, in the position of Europe in the in the world, and um, these are really the rationale why we end up into the eighteen um, uh, recommendations. So, in the uh, process, uh, what we will do is that uh, this recommendation we will be updated periodically. So, like in the previous year, uh, for example, every two years. But the articles, so currently we have twenty one, are really living document. A new article will be added on the IPIC website and the outdated one will be uh, 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 either removed or uh, corrected to take care of uh, what is the innovation. What we did that first because uh, this allows a more easy uh, a grasping of a particular topic by uh, by the reader, and also in our field, we see that is evolving very very fast. And um, adding an edition every two years means that well, it's uh, uh, the first year is quite okay, but after one year is already outdated. All the uh, 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 part of the technical uh, background is not uh, is, is not up to date anymore. So it's why we want with this new. Um, a version. Why uh, another uh, a new part is that uh, it's not only people from the IP community that we will ask to write article, but a specialist outside also in the in the community. So um, so it's really open to uh, to um, um, uh, to the best specialists to uh, write what they think about what will be the future in the IP uh, uh, field. So we will have in the in the in the IPIC website uh, independent access to each article, and once a year we will have a consolidated version uh, in a PDF or uh, like we have here a paper version that uh, you should have received uh, uh, if you uh, are uh, in the in in the mailing list of the of the IPIC newsletter, uh, and it's available uh, on the on the IPIC. A website as uh, ipic.net uh, vision and here this is the current list of the of the article so you see uh, they cover uh, 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 a lot of domain uh, of course most of them are on the technical dimension but we cover also uh, the impact of uh, of the ip community or ip technologies into the societal impact uh, 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 what are the position of, uh, of Europe and what uh, could be the business also that uh, could have impact on, uh, on the IP community. But first, before uh, telling you what are our recommendations, I will try to start with a uh, with few contexts that lead us to uh, go to, to, to write this, uh, this recommendation. First, uh, you know that uh, our domains, uh, computing technology, is evolving very, very fast. So, uh, for example, uh, if we compare the top supercomputer, so I take one of uh, of uh, nearly three years ago, but because its figure was quite wrong, it's 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 two hundred petaflop. I will try to compare to the Cray two uh, of of, of nineteen eighty five, which is two gigaflop. So it's simply is 100 billion uh, improved in performance in, in, in 33 years. And you cannot perhaps imagine what our field has achieved because if we compare this to the fastest car at that time in 8085, that was a Lamborghini that will run at about uh, 300 kilometer. So now if we have done the same speed in transportation, we will have uh, a car that will go at 27 times the speed of light. 
So that was just so, showing you the tremendous increase of performance, both from hardware and from software that the, uh, uh, that the community or the uh, ICT has done in the, in the last decades. What we also see is that the web, which is what is visible now, is really uh, uh, evolving. We see less and less use of uh, web browser, but more and more use of uh, specialized apps that offer and are connected to services, like the services to book an hotel room. But we we'll see also here that uh, we have a various level of hierarchy. You could, of course, download the apps for each of the service provider, so if uh, each hotel. But you could also uh, 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 download an aggregator that aggregates all these services. So, uh, for example, booking is this kind of aggregator services. But you could also see aggregator of aggregators, uh, like Kayak, that could aggregate several, uh, several of these uh, uh, aggregators. So basically, we end up with a very like, uh, large complexity. And you have 10, 20 of apps that are basically doing the same services, booking a hotel room. So we see here that we should do something that uh, uh, simplifies this, because basically what you want is to book a hotel room. So here we have something to do, and you will see what we propose to do it. Uh, uh, one other point is that uh, we are more and more using more what we call natural interfaces. So it's less and less use of, uh, of a screen on, uh, on a keyboard. So we are using more and more a smartphone with a touch screen and also voice uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the assistant. And uh, more and more systems that could adapt on are aware of the environment. So presenting you the information depending on where you are. It could display on your smartwatch, on your smart glasses, or on the screen, uh, depending on the situation. So we, we really see this evolution of the presentation of information. This is also reflected of what happened in, in internet in a minute. So from 2018 to 2020, we see a, a, a large increase into video. Typically, three time, uh, three, uh, uh, three time more video uh, than uh, than two years ago, and also uh, four time more picture. And in terms of voice, the selling of the smart speaker was nearly uh, four and a half time more. And as you can see here, the number of text message, the number of mail remain uh, 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 quite um, quite constant. Of, of, of this a very slow increase. So you see the number of mail is uh, 187 million to 190 million. So it's not a factor uh, a three or a factor four like for video. So we are more and more interacting with what is natural to us, a vision, uh, a, a touch, gesture, voice, and things like that. Um, uh, as you as you also uh, 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 see, uh, we see more the web as a repository of knowledge uh, and uh, with all this natural uh, uh, interface. No more keyboard. And uh, uh, as I explained to you, uh, it's more going to user-specific representation of information depending on the context. Uh, depending on the context. And we see even the young generation, they didn't use Google anymore. They look on the YouTube, and if it's not on YouTube, it didn't exist. So it's very important to see that the video uh, is, is taking uh, the, the major uh, a part compared to text, for example. But all of these are mainly under the control of the uh, what, uh, what we call hyperscalers, uh, like the GAFAM, so the US company like Google, Facebook, Amazon, or the Chinese one, like the, what we call the Baytics, like Baidu, uh, Alibaba, Tencent, and Xiaomi. So uh, this could be also a threat for uh, the privacy. So you know all the problem about Facebook, about uh, uh, all, uh, uh, all the trial and problem they have. And what we could see is that perhaps this company have access to the personal data, but in Europe, we have an asset, which is the collective data. So the data that are in a city, in, uh, in, in, in the hospital, in our administration. 
So it's perhaps through this that we could uh, gain, uh, regain competitivity uh, of Europe. And uh, when we, what we need is that, uh, uh, and that will be explained more later, uh, uh, some kind of orchestrator that could really get their services and present it to the user in an uh, and in an easy way. So that's uh, that where Europe could make the difference and also link more to the uh, uh, to the professional than in the uh, a user uh, a domain. What we see also in terms of hardware is that uh, everything is going to heterogeneity. So with uh, with more accelerator, uh, a different uh, instruction set. So uh, the Intel one, 86, the ARM. So now uh, RIS-5 is really booming. And uh, we see more and more uh, this, uh, this thing that uh, um, uh, uh, hardware is an or orchestration of, uh, of, um, of various accelerators dedicated to a particular domain. And one application is the orchestration of all this uh, uh, acceleration. And we know that because of efficiency. And one other point about efficiency is that uh, uh, computing is not really the problem. So if you see here, making uh, an operation on a 64 bit, it's about 20 picojoule, but is really consuming a lot of energy, is bringing the data to the computing part. And it's typically three order of magnitude more to move data than to compute them. So the goal is to avoid to, uh, uh, as, as much as possible to move data. So we see it in some kind of uh, processor architecture evolution. So we had in the past a single processor, a single code uh, that run on a, on a sequential processor, uh, uh, limited to the technology, so the end of the dinner scaling. So we go to multiplying the number of core. Uh, so that's the parallelism, which started uh, to be a challenge for the programming. So now we are in the array of heterogeneity. So not only parallelism, but also uh, more heterogeneous architecture. And perhaps the future will be more disruptive uh, um, architecture, where it's more data-centric, where the computing and the storage is more merged together to, to, uh, to avoid to move data. And it could be also another point that instead of moving data, you could also move codes. So uh, for example, if your task is to take the average of uh, 10 gigabytes of data, it might be more efficient to move the code that makes the average from the cloud to your local premises than sending 10 gigabytes of data to the cloud only to make the, uh, the average. And uh, here it's why uh, we move more towards uh, data-centric uh, uh, um, uh, architecture. And of course, there are new paradigms like quantum computing that could also uh, help as a, as a special uh, accelerator for some domains. But uh, uh, we see also this chance to have uh, uh, this problem of heterogeneity in the software. Uh, what we see now is that um, uh, uh, an application it is built by orchestrating various services. So uh, in your smartphone, your camera is providing a services to the processor and also uh, 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 it's interact with the cloud, which is also pro uh, providing some services like computation or like storage. So it's really the point where we need to have this orchestration. And what we think is that this orchestration should be done more naturally. Typically, uh, what we see now in the personal assistant, you could tell them, uh, book me an hotel room in Paris, for example. And here you don't have to go to the detail to all hotel and things like that. It will orchestrate all the services providing by the provider of hotel room, also the transportation and things like that to give you uh, what you need. So, so the idea is having more natural expression of programming and, and we change the word programming into orchestrating services so that the application is finally done. Um, well, we, we could do, uh, 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 that is not only uh, a high level uh, uh, thinking, we also try to analyze how, how this could be done. And one example could be 
to use uh, microservices on the RESTful uh, API, which allow to have uh, more independent from the uh, uh, technology where your your code is uh, uh, is implemented. One other challenge that we see in the uh, in the IPIC is that um, uh, uh, the web is more and more interacting with the physical reality. So controlling devices. So the best example will be self-driving car. Uh, where here it's not only displaying to, uh, uh, information, but it's also taking action in the physical world. And that means that some other function, non-functional requirements should be added. So like timing, if the braking of a self-driving car has few seconds delay because of transmission and things like that, it will kill somebody. So what you need here is to add the non-functional property like the timing, like latency, like localization uh, for privacy. You might need that some uh, of your data will be stored locally or in the French territory or in German territory or in European territory or in your factory or in your home instead to be stored in China, US or whatever. Uh, uh, also, what is the cost? Because some of the services you might have uh, 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 free services, but it cannot guarantee the delay or the localization, or a service that you have to pay, but then I did more, um, a more guarantee. And of course, the energy. So some services could consume more or less energy. So that's typically also this non-functional property that should be added to the services so that this orchestrator should be able to take the right decision depending on the on the context. And it's the link where the IoT, the cloud, meet with cyber physical system. Uh, and we mean cyber physical system like system which interact with the physical world. And as I already explained, uh, we see more now that we have really a continuum between the deep edge, the edge, uh, the edge of fog, the cloud, the HPC. So basically, uh, what we want is that a service could run everywhere and even be able to move it. So when we define, when we write one services, uh, it should be able to run everywhere, moving from a server to another, to, uh, to an edge device or thing like that. So uh, it's very important to uh, uh, be able to have this and it's starting with the containers, uh, uh, and even now with the micro containers, with, with uh, hypervisor, with uh, virtualization and things like that. But, to, but we are still not here. And as I say, it's very important to move. So uh, for example, if we have to control the braking in a self-driving car, of course you, you should do it on the cloud. But uh, for safety, that means that this service should be done locally and uh, uh, in an efficient way in terms of cost, in terms of energy consumption, and in terms also here on the, on the volume, it should take all, the, all your car to, to, uh, uh, to store the computing. And we see that even the hyperscaler company like Google, Amazon are looking at this. And you see that, for example, two years ago, Google announced that they reduce the complexity of their a voice understanding system uh, from about 100 gigabyte to half a gigabyte. So that means that now, and it's already running on the on your smartphone. So you could make functions that were done previously on the cloud locally on your smartphone. And it's the same for Amazon. The new processor in their new uh, uh, um, uh, Echo uh, a loudspeaker um, will be able to process a much more data locally and to make voice recognition locally. And what we see also in terms of artificial intelligence is that, uh, well, I'm sorry, it's perhaps not very visible, but basically here is that for the same functionality uh, due to the evolution on the algorithm and things like that, we could see that uh, the, uh, the computing footprint could be uh, uh, decreased by a factor two every 16 months. So it's some kind of uh, more slow for the complexity of artificial intelligence devices, meaning that we could do more and more 
of things uh, related to artificial intelligence at the edge and uh, moving them from the cloud to the edge uh, um, uh, devices or to the micro server that are locally. And this also has a business impact. And uh, we see that the, uh, really a booming in terms of a deep learning a chip uh, 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 will emerge more and more. So that is from various uh, um, a company. We see really this, uh, this exponential growth into uh, the use of dedicated accelerator. And you see it's not only for the market, for the low power or for the cloud, but it's really cover the complete spectrum from the data center to the very low power on the, on the deep edge. And the last point that I would like to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to give you, and this is uh, a slide that we made basically two years ago, is that we see more and more for this orchestration, for linking all these services together, uh, it should not be the user that write code to do it. It, sh it should be software uh, uh, that is really making this software, integrating uh, all these functions together. Of course, the software that is making this aggregation together should be well written, should be done manually, and it's what we call uh, a trusted computing base. But all the rest uh, should be done automatically or automatically automatically uh, uh, from the requirement, from the high level requirement done by the, um, uh, by the user in an interactive uh, thing. Like basically uh, some devices are doing now, uh, when they didn't understand you, they ask you, is it really thing that you mean or something like that? So this is very important to have this feedback to be sure that's uh, uh, that the goal will be good understood by the by the system, and um, and uh, uh, we see one example here. I think that you know GPT three, uh, which was shown uh, in January in uh, in July last year, and it's a really very big system. So it was learning, but. Uh, 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 about uh, uh, 500,000 billion token. And you see that the complete Wikipedia is less than 1% of all that it can. And the result uh, is quite impressive, but for the learning, it's also very big. And uh, as you see, uh, the biggest comp uh, a computer I have access uh, here in France at CAA, it's, uh, it's run 20 on the, on the, on the um, uh, uh, HP 500, and it's a machine which has um, uh, half um, half a million core, and it's consuming about uh, three kilowatts. And it will need a, a, about 300 uh, a days uh, uh, fully loaded to learn this GPT-3. So it's not uh, a small model, I do agree. Uh, but the results are quite impressive. To enter a description of what well, you want to do. So this is an example, a user application with a feed and some it's icons and user interface. And when you hit submit, and the application actually generates an application that looks very much like Instagram. It has all of the buttons, all of the UI, and a scrolling feed. Just astounding in terms of what it's able to do. The next example is a coding example. This is a system that we based on and they're describing an application with this basic to-do list application. An application. So what the software is doing is generating a React application, all of the functions and procedures, all of the things that are necessary to create a React component to handle to do. And you can see it works. You can add items to the to-do list. There's all the events and triggers for handling the interaction to the application. And it's it's not new because it's basically uh, what we shown uh, by, uh, in the previous version. So I think this is a, a slide that, which is basically five years ago, where we pl plan to, uh, when we say that we should use uh, 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 cognitive solutions, so artificial intelligence, to creating new software, generating code on creating also a new hardware, like the generative design is done for medical. Uh, uh, mechanical engineering. And even earlier, I think this was six or seven years ago, we were moving to uh, what we call at that time declarative programming, where uh, instead of uh, uh, like we program now, we see uh, each step what the system should do. Uh, we need to, uh, we should not explain how to do things, but what it should do. 
So that's more going to this giving specification to the system. And the last point uh, 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 from the context that's, uh, that we uh, uh, try to uh, summarize in this IPIC vision is the drive towards sustainability. So of course you have the ecological sustainability and it's really a, a key action in the uh, uh, European Commission with the European Green Deal. And for us, it's really going to lowering the footprint of ICT and also being able to increase the lifetime or modularity or reparability so that it could decrease the, the, uh, the footprint of our devices into, uh, into the environment. Uh, uh, we don't think that we are really directly involved is in, in economic sustainability, but in the societal um, uh, sustainability, I will have no time to go into more detail about the societal, uh, the societal impact, but you see uh, that we have really now a, a, a problem that individual, uh, individuals need to gain again their sovereignty over their device and data, which is not uh, the case today. Basically, as soon as they put some new data, some new picture into the system, well, it will belong to the Facebook, to the, or even to the hardware provider that could do whatever he wants. So, so, so that's a problem. One other point that we see is that all these hyperscaler are fighting for the uh, attention of people. So basically, they do all the tricks they can so that uh, you become addict to their, ser uh, to their services. So it's also something that, uh, that is important to be able to have some kind of protection uh, uh, against this uh, and also against uh, 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 fake news, uh, false data, and things like that. Um, I already explained uh, the exponential growth about uh, artificial intelligence, where I think that uh, GPT-3 was really uh, 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 one of the examples. And you see that the complexity increase uh, is, uh, is even bigger than the decrease, uh, that the increase in efficiency of the algorithm, which was uh, doubling every uh, 16 months. So now it's doubling the need every three and a half months. So that's basically a key problem or key uh, a challenge of artificial intelligence to be able to manage all these demanding uh, um, uh, processing power with the impact is indeed the energy consumption. So you see transformers. So transformers is the basis of the of GPT-3, but the, but you see that the uh, equivalent of the, of of CO2 is uh, is is quite large and they say that uh, 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 training a single uh, transformer model can emit uh, as much as carbon as five cars during their entire lifetime. So this is a data from, uh, um, uh, from MIT. So here we really do uh, uh, have to work to be more efficient. Uh, so perhaps to reduce the size of the network to be more efficient, but also to decrease the footprint of the hardware and to make the software more efficient. And you see that the community starts uh, being aware of that uh, because yeah, uh, Joshua Benjo that, uh, uh, that has the, uh, the last uh, Turing Prize uh, with Geoffrey Hinton and Yann Lequin. Uh, so they are the good father of the new artificial intelligence launch this initiative that is called Code Carbon that allow you to assess uh, 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 typically what you need, uh, uh, what will be the impact uh, from your artificial intelligence programs. So uh, meaning that's uh, 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 more and more uh, something that uh, we should take into account. So that was uh, a very quick, very large view of, uh, of, uh, of the input that we collected, or some of the input we collected to write uh, uh, this um, uh, this new vision and um, that lead to the recommendation. So first, I would like to give you a short video. I'm not sure it will go uh, smoothly through a uh, full Zoom, but the video is also available on the IPIC website. So please go to the IPIC website if you if you have problem to. to in the 30 years since the advent of the internet, computers have changed how we live our lives. 
Tomorrow's computing systems will build a continuum of computing that will stretch from tiny interconnected devices that operate at the boundary between computers and the physical world to bigger and more complex systems distributed across the globe. Software actions will be executed wherever they are most efficient and might even move according to needs relating to energy consumption or latency. This flexibility will be needed because these complex systems, which interact directly with the physical world, need dynamic orchestration to meet human objectives, as well as security measures to ensure safety and privacy, while offering a diverse range of services. At the interface between humans and the cyber world, virtual entities will be like guardian angels, orchestrating services and protecting people and businesses from the complexity and dangers of cyberspace. Because they understand humans' natural ways of communicating, these virtual entities will allow everyone to access the full range of services of this new era. High Peak will propose to and help Europe to consolidate its talents to create this solution to unify and synergize technical solutions that already exist and take them to the next level for the benefit of humanity. Want to know more? Read the full vision roadmap on the High Peak website. So that was a high level uh, summary of the, of the recommendation that you can see on the back page of the, of the IPIC vision. So uh, it's easy on the physical uh, uh, version to, to have access to the back page. On the PDF, of course, it's the last page. And here we have identified uh, a, a, a typically the key recommendation. On one is really to add this non-functional uh, uh, a prop uh, a property and to manage uh, also the complexity uh, of this uh, new ICT system that we are developing. And we try to condense uh, the recommendation into very compact mathematical formula that we could call uh, the 5S CPS square. So it's going really the CPS to the new power, to the power two, with the attribute of the 5S. Uh, so the CPU square, uh, uh, is easy. So we started from cyber physical system, which we think is uh, is a new challenge for uh, for ICT interacting with the physical world. And uh, what we see is that uh, from the existing cyber uh, physical system, they need to be cognitive. So adding the uh, some kind of intellig uh, artificial intelligence to be able to assess the context assess the reality of the world. So that was the problem that was difficult with formula to uh, to put into formulas what is uh, our reality. So artificial intelligence um, and deep learning are quite good to be able to uh, uh, manage uh, and to get uh, data from this uh, 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 real, uh, uh, real world, which is uh, not so easy to uh, to grasp uh, through, uh, through basic equations. The next point that is that we think is 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 important is that up, up to now most of the CPS system were uh, uh, basically uh, 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 passive, so they react to the event. They didn't forecast. They didn't predict. Uh, so so the idea is uh, is that they could have the internal modeling of of the of themselves or on or of the environment, so that they could uh, be proactive, and uh, that is really linked to the digital twin, where they have uh, their own model of the environment, and they could say in advance that could be the best parameter, best thing to do in case of uh, of the event uh, will uh, will arrive. And uh, the next step is that we have uh, a physical system or CPS. But we see, and it's also linked to the continuum, that uh, we are more going into system of systems. So it's very important, this notion of a transcontinuum between uh, uh, IoT, Deep Edge, uh, Edge, uh, Cloud, uh, uh, Fog, uh, and HPC. So that's really how we go from CPS to CPS square. But also we need to add non-functional requirement to this CPS system. So first, they need to be sober. So basically using less resources, using less energy. 
So that's what we gather into the term sober, both energy efficiency on using less material. They need to be secure. So security is a key asset. And we see now uh, with all the cyber attack, it's very important. And also safe, because as these systems are interacting directly with the reality, with the world, safety is a key feature that they need to have. And also straightforward, it means that uh, we need to manage the complexity, be able to uh, program them, give them what to do without uh, managing the underlying complexity of all this system of system. And of course, sustainability is also a key asset. So that's basically the five S that we want to, to, to give as a tribute to the next uh, um, CPS system. So that is uh, basically uh, the basis of the first recommendation. So uh, uh, really going to the cognitive part, so going to ultra low power accelerator for artificial uh, uh, intelligence and even new approaches that are less brute force and use less data and less label data. Uh, also uh, uh, on the cyber uh, uh, point, uh, it's really uh, the point that we see this evolution from the World Wide Web toward this more cyber physical service based uh, 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 new approach. So Europe should be a leader here. And uh, we didn't want to uh, bring something totally, uh, totally new. We want some uh, uh, only to add what is needed on top of the existing standard on technology to basically go into this new cyber world that should be uh, that should have societal uh, uh, aspects. So, so basically, to meet and satisfy uh, human needs and interests, like privacy is one of them. Uh, we have the predictive, and it's really what I already say that it's basically also adding more intelligence because the system now can uh, can predict what could be uh, what the environment could be doing. Uh, um, a physical domain into the physics. We need to really to have systems that are correct by construction and that also uh, takes the non-functional property uh, uh, from the physical part, like timing, like requirement, like size, like physical size, like energy consumption, like cost and things like that. And we need also to have uh, uh, this research into how do we orchestrate this complexity of the system of system that could be composed of 10,000 or even billion of devices working together uh, uh, for, uh, 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 for various aims. And in terms of the aggregates, so we already talked about uh, the sober, so really uh, 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 use really what we could do the best to have uh, the lowest power consumption that we could have. And here there are several technologies that could be merged together. It's not only one technology that could uh, do that, that could achieve that, but it's a combination of several technologies together. Secure, and as we already say, cyber security is a key element. And here also perhaps the point is also trying to use uh, artificial intelligence in terms to mitigate or to remove this risk as, uh, as far as, we, as uh, we can do. And also the, the, the next point is about safety. I already talked about uh, this and we need really to develop uh, all the methodology to create this uh, safety critical system or to further improve them compared to what we have uh, um, uh, today. On the point also on a straightforward is how to be able to be an amplifier of the human productivity to generate code, to generate better uh, architecture and to manage uh, this complex system. And here also here, perhaps we could use artificial intelligence really to help to design uh, new software, new hardware. So using artificial intelligence techniques for the IP community uh, instead of hyping community designing artificial intelligence system. So it should be also uh, at our benefits to help in our uh, daily work. On sustainability, uh, uh, that is really uh, uh, a key point. And, uh, and we have several aspects here about uh, how to extend 
the lifetime of, uh, of devices, how we could upgrade them, reuse them, repair them using some modularity so that we could reuse. So that's a really a key challenge that could make the difference if, uh, if Europe could be a leader in this, uh, in this field of uh, sustainable ICT. On the global policy uh, recommendation, uh, 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 basically uh, what, uh, what we say is that um, uh, we should continue to investigate to new technology uh, uh, like uh, uh, from the uh, quantum technology to uh, uh, spiking on neuromorphic architecture to using light uh, for, uh, uh, for computing uh, or using uh, 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 3D stacking approach. But uh, we still think that the old, let's say old silicon technology, that will be still the aggregator of all this new technology. It will not replace it. It's, it will accelerate some part and they will all work together in some kind of, uh, of synergy. I will go more in, uh, in this field at some, uh, some point later. Same for the guardian angel, I will under more detail later. And also open source is very uh, uh, important uh, so that uh, this will leverage all our uh, brain in Europe so that we could work um, uh, together. But it's not so easy because you have the problem of licensing, of supporting, and things like that. So we uh, so we propose that we have really a dedicated European uh, uh, institute of or, or hub to support open source. Uh, so to go back to to the um, to the silicon approach, uh, as you see in this drawing, is again this idea of orchestrator. The, the old microprocessor silicon based Bremerman architecture will be, will be more the aggregator of various accelerator uh, that could see now with the graphical, with the GPU. Uh, it could be also for some artificial intelligence or for uh, some neuromimetic accelerator, but also a quantum uh, system will, will be an accelerator, in fact, from a, from a normal computer. So we need all this on how to be able to orchestrate onto, uh, on to be interoperable. So uh, for example, how uh, um, a programmer that have to define an optimization process could use a quantum computer without being a physicist, uh, uh, knowing all the quantum uh, uh, laws and things like that. So we need again here, a way to hide the complexity and uh, so that a human could use it even if they are not specialists in neuromorphic architecture into quantum technology and things like that. So that's really important that we have perhaps uh, this unified um, a framework or a way to go easily from one domain, one representation of information to another representation of information. So that's also one domain that we need to, um, uh, to go. And as we uh, see previously, uh, even now when we worked, uh, uh, one of the reasons of the success of Python is because it's an aggregator. All the real computing are done in the library. On, on Python is really this glue that's allowed to make a functionality from the various function that are done in a, in a library. And all that library could be done in optimized code, even if Python, the glue didn't need really to be orchestrated. Um, even in the application, as we say uh, previously, it's really spread from the deep edge to the cloud. And it's, um, and, and it's really this notion of continuum of computing. And the, the good thing is that there is an initiative that is called the Transcontinuum Initiative that try to bring to, uh, uh, together organizations to see what could be really the link between all these domain and uh, uh, basically uh, see what would, could be a continuous dynamic workflow between smart sensor on IoT devices, uh, uh, passing through edge uh, on deep edge, going to a smart network on services, cloud with big data on analytics, on, uh, I'm going to the cloud and uh, with uh, digital twin that allow to make uh, a cyber physical system. And this is an initiative that involves uh, eight organizations now. Uh, uh, basically, ATP for HPC, that's as, as the name say, 
is more focused on towards uh, uh, high performance computing, EXO, uh, which is about uh, cyber security, BDVA, which is about big data, uh, well, that's the big data value association, uh, 5GEA, which is more about network and services, AU Maths, which is more about uh, uh, application software, modeling, and things like that. Claire, which is a network about artificial intelligence resources. IPIC, and the IIoT, which is the Alliance for uh, Internet of Things uh, Innovation. Um, all these organizations are, are working together uh, to see really how we could uh, uh, bridge the gap between the various communities uh, 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 and what could be uh, a way to have a smooth interaction and a smooth exchange into this new paradigm of, uh, of the uh, um, transcontinuum um, of computing. One also, um, so we have all these technical recommendations and we were thinking how to be able to uh, uh, put them together into some kind of, uh, of uh, moonshot project or program that could really bring all the synergy on all the domain together. And we end up with this proposal where it's basically uh, trying to get input from the evolution of the ICT. So as you say, uh, offering cross-domain services. So the idea of everything as a services. So uh, uh, bringing services through, um, um, uh, through, um, uh, through application. Uh, the continuum of computing with the idea of interoperability, virtualization, scalability that should be done on top of existing technology. Uh, this idea of uh, white ones run everywhere with the containers and migration of code. And here, it's really the new paradigm. Instead of moving data, you could also be able to move code uh, uh, to be more efficient. Uh, uh, the notion that everything has a service and how could you make this dynamic selection on, on orchestration of these distributed services? link with the CPS and the constraint, so the non-functional property that should be expressed and through, for example, contract-based services uh, uh, on top of, uh, of REST API, cybersecurity, and also the point li uh, link that the system should be loyal to its user and not to the provider of the services. And also one key point is that the system should be correct by construction on using uh, as much as possible uh, a formal method and formal proof to be sure that this platform, you could have trust in it. And also one other point that I didn't have time to go into detail is the controlling the inbound. So all the data that come to you, is it real data? Is it fake data? Is it a virus? Is it an attack? So to really make the, uh, uh, the, the analysis of what is incoming and also the outbound data. So when you share data, so what you share with your doctor is not what you are sharing uh, with, uh, with Facebook, for example. And then uh, you need to be really sure of uh, what is going on uh, uh, here. And of course, with natural interface and things like that, on running much as possible into edge processing and in uh, European hardware platform. So try to synergize of this. Uh, uh, we, we come up with this paradigm that try to unify all this, uh, all this technical solution based on existing technology. And it's basically a holistic approach to really build this uh, new and complete uh, a new web which is uh, uh, the next European uh, ecosystem or, uh, or infrastructure that we are looking for. And it's a moonshot that we nickname Guardian Angel because from the user, it could be uh, uh, like a Guardian Angel that protects you and allow you to navigate uh, through the new, uh, uh, through the new uh, um, uh, ICT system. Uh, I'm running a little bit about uh, 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 out of time, but just to show that there are several challenges. That's uh, interoperability. So how to overcome the fragmentation, how to deal uh, with heterogeneity, interoperability, on managing this non-functional requirement, how to scale, uh, how to cope with dynamicity, new services that are appearing, disappearing, 
with all the constraints of uh, safety and security. So really, as the idea is that we have all pieces of the puzzle and we need basically to add the glue uh, uh, to put them together to have this new web. And here also we need to have help uh, from the system itself because it's very complex and for this orchestration of how to put this grid together, we need, of course, to define interoperability, but dynamic plugging should be done by the smart orchestrator. And uh, that is what we call this cross-disciplinary uh, cross uh, moonshot program that we call um, um, a guardian angel. So uh, just to finish on the societal um, recommendation, uh, uh, we see that um, uh, in terms of computing, uh, we are not very attractive. We have good uh, research center here on, 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 on there, but not something that is really attracting people like, let's say, CERN uh, uh, in physics. So perhaps it could be good to create this uh, uh, European Competence Center so that could have real visibility into the computing system, both hardware and software. Of course, uh, uh, Europe should have a strong digital infrastructure. And uh, uh, training is also very important because we see that the technology is evolving very rapidly. So we should invest in lifelong learning so that people should be up, up to date and could cope with the new technology. And it's really also the point about uh, how to cope with all aspects of the 5S CPS uh, uh, square. And uh, also the point uh, in terms of societal is that we should uh, uh, encourage innovation culture that are not so present in Europe compared to US, um, uh, for example, so that we could really create a new, uh, new company, new startup, new idea, and put them on the, on the market. And last, which is very important, Europe has a different ethics than the US and China, um, uh, for example. So we should be sure that the next web, the, the, the ICT system, will implement, at least in Europe, our, uh, uh, our value on our uh, 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 ethics. So we need uh, 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 to make some progress here, and we recommend that digital ethics should become part of the, of the business practice. So to conclude uh, here, uh, 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 we see that today we have the cloud uh, uh, where basically all the edge is more smart, uh, simple sensor. So that's basically what is the GAFA. They would like to control all the ICT, all the, all the data on processing and uh, on the peripheral only dumb devices. Uh, what we see today currently in Europe with initiative like IIoT or AGI is to bring more intelligence to the edge and to have more distributed computing. And uh, in IPIC with this guardian angel vision, we are looking to the next uh, a step where basically the web is a repository of knowledge on services on the orchestration protection of data is done by the cooperation of this uh, open smart uh, trustable orchestrator that we call uh, that we call uh, um, a guardian angel so that was uh, very quick and uh, try to summarize this 240 page into uh, uh, less than uh, than uh, one hour i hope that i'm still on time and uh, so now i'm open to um uh, to questions okay mark thank you very much for your inspiring presentation um so far there have not been questions in the uh, q a session so if you have questions uh, about addressing the audience, please uh, enter your questions in the Q&A session. If you want to ask a question to Mark directly, you can also raise your hands and then we can unmute you um, uh, so that you can also ask a question directly to Mark. Hmm. Um, so while we're waiting for a question, Mark, uh, I have one question. According to you, what would be the most important recommendations for uh, Europe? So in the vision, uh, we write about sovereignty and, and other things. So what is most important for you in this time? 
So I think the most important thing is to um, not to work in silos. And uh, we see uh, 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 clearly that uh, it's a problem. Even in the structure of the commission, there are very siloties into various things. And basically what we see uh, with, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, a continuum of computing, uh, at least in our field, is that we are omnipresent in all application domain. So computing is going from medical to factory to agriculture, and things like that. Uh, so we should not develop solutions that are only for agriculture, for automotive, and things like that. And, uh, and it's very important to unify all the synergies uh, in Europe, and not each one working in its own silo. So I think this is the idea uh, behind the TCI, between this idea of transcontinuum, and um, even between this idea of, uh, of guardian angel, because we have very good people in security, in orchestration, in virtualization, and things like that. But they all work into their domain. So how to put all the knowledge that we have in Europe, put them together so that we could have the complete picture. I really like this idea of the puzzle. So we have already all the piece of the puzzle, but they are uh, dispersed and they are not linked together. So the idea is how to put them together to build more than the uh, set of pieces, but really building the global image or the, or the, or the picture from the, from the puzzle. But I think that's more recommendation towards the commission, I think, and how they organize their, the public funding of, of research. Is there any recommendation that you could give to companies, to startup companies, what kind of domains they should invest in for the future? Well, I think uh, it will not be new that, uh, that we see a big boom now in, uh, um, uh, in artificial intelligence. And you see also a trance to work more on the, on the edge. Uh, so to see how, uh, how we could deal uh, uh, with function that we could do on the edge uh, and also using federation of resources. So instead of storing everything in one cloud, uh, uh, perhaps we could have a federation of uh, smaller devices, but it's also the way because GaiaX is also more or less going into this direction and things like that. Um, I think uh, because we don't have very uh, this hyperscaler, this very big company like in the US or like in China, but uh, we are more distributed in Europe. So we should also reflect this uh, both from the technology that allow to have a distributed system to work smoothly. And uh, so this could be done from the technical point of view, from the business point of view as well. Okay. I see two questions. There's one question in the chat. Uh, what is your view on bringing Europe at par with the world on chip manufacturing? <laughs> that's a very good. Uh, that's a very good question and very difficult to answer. So uh, what I can say is that the semiconductor industry was built to be a worldwide organization and with no localization. So in the sense that uh, you see now that we have. Uh, uh, some delay in uh, in, in, uh, in delivering uh, some of the uh, uh, component for the game station, um, uh, for example. And it's uh, not because TSMC is not, uh, not only because TSMC, so the Taiwanese company is not able to do it, but also because there was a fire in a company in Japan that is making the thin layer that interconnects the die to the package. And without this, well, we, you, uh, you cannot make chip. Uh, same thing, so uh, 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 the, the wafer could be done in one, uh, in, in one country, done some, uh, somewhere else. So you know now the main provider of memory of Korea. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's also a fact. So, so we really have uh, in the past this distribution of, uh, of very specialized work uh, all around the world. And uh, basically, well, um, my background was in, uh, was in Philips, but uh, a chip could be designed in California, uh, uh, having, uh, having it uh, done in, uh, in TSMC, and the wafer cut uh, again uh, in US and packaged back in Taiwan. So, so, so even a chip could travel uh, three or four times before going to the, uh, to the customer, because this was really the model. 
So, uh, uh, so just to explain why it's very difficult now to go to each people or each country going to add the complete ecosystem now in its own premises because it's really an ecosystem building of all uh, of all uh, of all things. Of course, you could have a foundry in Europe, but uh, if you don't have this material that makes the lens, yeah, you can make uh, IC anymore. Uh, uh, Europe is very strong in the, in the lithography with ISML, which is the only provider of the deep UV machine that are needed to, to the very small uh, uh, size uh, um, um, uh, IC. So I think uh, uh, if you want to master everything, it will be very difficult. I didn't say that we should not be able to do uh, some part in Europe and um, indeed, uh, we could make some um, uh, some foundry part in Europe, knowing that, of course, it will take time for a foundry to be a, a fully operational. They, that was uh, 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 it's some kind of uh, of uh, of magic. You have to tweak the parameter. It's not only easy. It's uh, it's by making that you learn and you optimize uh, your process. So even if we put uh, uh, a lot of billion to build a foundry in order to be uh, cost effective and be operational and have a, a very high yield, it will take years. So uh, uh, it's a long time um, 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 of thinking. So I think the point is that uh, instead of trying to do everything here, we should have is in, uh, enough leverage uh, in the process so that we could still have a weight in the global ecosystem. So that's my personal point of view. And that's, um, then I think with that answer, you probably also answered the second question in the Q&A section. Do you think that Europe should have their own semiconductor company that can compete with TSMC uh, or Samsung? So you're more a fan of collaborating and using our power um, to, co to, to, to collaborate with the rest of the world, I think. Um, so then there is also um, a technical question, the last one regarding competition heterogeneity trends. Can you see it, Mark? Uh, no, I don't see it. I see the, the Q&A session. I don't see the Q&A. Uh, uh, yeah, OK, yeah. Come Q&A. Yeah. And the last one from Francesc Fons. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's a very good question. And um, um, my feeling is that uh, perhaps the current FPGA are too fine grain. So I think again here we need to go one level higher in terms of uh, in terms of abstraction. So I will be more about CGRA than the current FPGA, and uh, here we could be innovative. Uh, 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 yes, indeed. And for the um, well. Uh, 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 if you if we follow the current trend in terms of foundry, you see that the number of foundry for the very advanced process is reducing. So we could see that uh, in a few years from now, you could have only one foundry. So a TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in Korea. And to make a chip into two nanometers, so two nanometer is already on their uh, on their roadmap. Uh, it will take billions. Uh, to make them because it will be huge chips, very complex for the valley uh, for the validation and things like that. So that means that you need a market uh, that's allowed to have this return for investment. So that means that uh, 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 it might be useful to make uh, a universal chip like an FPGA or like a TGRA that could be used at billion of uh, of uh, of units. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, and on, on here they could gain back from uh, 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 have a return from um, um, uh, from investment. So that might be one uh, uh, one option if we follow to have this track on going to smaller and smaller technology with more and more expensive uh, uh, binary, so non uh, non recur uh, non recurrent engineering costs. So that means that you need to sell billion. And of course, the smartphone market was the one to allow this. But if you want to have really a diversification of application, uh, either you will have to use a smartphone chip in all your application, that could be a solution, or you could have a chip which is more flexible. 
And indeed, a CGRA uh, could be a good solution. And um, I will take an, an analogy. Uh, basically, when you see into biological elements, they are all done with a cell. So basically, the same structure that are customized depending on its function. So we could have the same at the end to have the same basic elements, the basic uh, computing cell that by software, by configurability, will be adapted to, to, uh, to its function. But that could be also a, a way of research. Mm -hmm. OK, so there are two more questions. But before taking these questions, um, there is also we also created an environment where we can hang out. It's called a gather town. And uh, Inuko will post the link in the chat. So if you want to join us after the session, feel free to, um, to use it. Mark, there are two more questions, uh, I think. This one by Thomas. About in, process, in memory processing, I think. Yes, yes. I think that it's, uh, it's uh, what we think that's, uh, that the cost of moving data uh, is really uh, a, a large. So the next challenge is indeed to avoid to move data. Uh, so that means that uh, in, pre so in, in processing uh, memory, or uh, it, uh, it could be interesting. The problem today is that uh, memory is very regular. So that might have an impact into the processing that we could do uh, will be very regular. And the current architecture are also quite good into regular architecture. The main challenge is the, re is the irregularity architecture. So basically uh, all, the, all the pointers, the list and the things like that is not really making computation with dense matrices. It's, uh, it's more making computation with sparse matrices or with link. And here we indeed might have uh, new innovations so that uh, this in-memory computing might be more suited for this, uh, for this processing. And again, today, as far as I know, it's still quite simple operation that you, well, um, uh, uh, we, we need to be more precise between in-memory and near-memory processing. So in near-memory processing, you could handle larger size, you, you could handle byte or words. While generally in memory computing, uh, you more are, are dealing with bits. It's not always true and uh, I'm perhaps too simplifying. But uh, here, yes, uh, uh, I think here that is really a challenge for research to really see what could be done and what could be done for uh, irregular processing uh, using this, uh, this uh, structure. Thank you. There is still a long waiting question about the impact of COVID on our domain, Mark. <clears throat> uh, 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 I am perhaps not the best one, and I will uh, uh, ask you to answer, Kun, because uh, you work uh, uh, on the roadmap on this topic, so it might be uh, more address to you. <laughs> um, well, I, of course, uh, Eric, I think the happy community can, of course, uh, help uh, fighting the COVID pandemic. I think we already did by providing high performance computing systems in order to speed up the development of cures, of vaccines um, and so on. Um, we could also improve the communication networks. I think there was a need since we are working from home, most of us. Uh, we felt the need for a um, uh, reliable communication infrastructure. Uh, obviously, of course, this is not something that can be fixed uh, over a year, but uh, we will keep working on that uh, for sure. So I think the technology that we deliver or that we provide is, is uh, neutral, I would say, and obviously can also be used to, um, to protect the society from effects like uh, pandemics. Uh, and if you look at it, Fortunately, thanks to all the investments of the last decades, uh, we could indeed move to uh, teleworking and work from home. If the pandemic would have happened 30 years ago, the situation would have been much more dramatic, I think, than what we experienced in the 2020s. Mm -hmm. I have a question from, uh, from Anonymous, uh, a, a viewer. I uh, would say that uh, can we start at least with the emerging technology manufacturing? I, I, I totally agree. And it's uh, what we say with, uh, in the recommendation is that we should continue to invest in, uh, in exploring a new technology. And, uh, and this is really crucial. 
The point is that we don't know yet what will be the one that will emerge. So it will be still try, uh, uh, trying several options and to see the one that will really uh, uh, find, uh, find their market on their, on their timing. So I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite important to do that. And um, also one of the points is that for IoT on deep edge, you will perhaps not need also the ultimate dance technology. Uh, uh, we see now uh, the European manufacturer are more are mainly making microcontrollers that they sell by billion into all devices uh, coming from coffee maker to cars and things like that. And this didn't really need to uh, to use the latest technology. So indeed, by combining this not latest technology, but with emerging technology like you say MRAM, RAM, memory store, and things like that. That could be uh, uh, indeed um, uh, a, a good approach and good uh, um, a discriminating factor. But we should be aware of something like that. The market, my point of view, uh, uh, will only uh, it will be only successful if it show at least uh, a factor five to ten better compared to the mainstream technology. And the mainstream has a huge investment. So it's very difficult for a new technology to really emerge in the classical context. But now it's changing because we are really at the end of the classical uh, 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 scaling and things like that. So I, I agree with, uh, with this remark is that it's now really time to try to explore new way uh, on new technologies. And uh, uh, they wrote about MRAM, um, a memory store, but we could also think about uh, uh, op about optical computing or other way to make computing. So that's uh, that could be also uh, a way that's need to be uh, um, uh, investigating, and perhaps uh, really focusing on one key application, on not trying to do uh, uh, a universal devices because here uh, it it will be re really too ambitious to at least first to compete with the existing progress in architecture. So focus in one market, develop one, uh, one good uh, alternative technology, and then it could grow. So that's my, uh, that's my recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. I propose, Mark, maybe to uh, wrap up the meeting here. I think you answered most of the uh, questions. Um, so thank you all for uh, joining in this uh, first webinar. You are all welcome to join us again for uh, the next webinar, which will take uh, place on Thursday, this Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, which will be about exascale computing. So you're all welcome. Um, and also the coming weeks, uh, of course. And if you want to hang out with some people who were in this meeting, feel free to uh, join us in a uh, gather clown uh, to continue the discussion. Thank you very much. And hopefully, thank you very much, Mark, you too, uh, for giving the presentation. And uh, hope to see you next time in our webinar series. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat>